Shadow the Hedgehog is a game with an infamous legacy. 17 years after its release, it's still endlessly riffed, memed, and dunked on. It's often touted as the starting point of Sonic's supposed Dark Age, which, bitch please, I had a Sega Saturn. Everyone seems to look at it with the same baffled and disgruntled question of who thought this was a good idea. I did. Or rather, my 16-year-old self did. In today's video, we'll explore why Shadow was appealing to me at the time, and how revisiting it now actually surprised me. Buckle in, this one's going to get controversial. Shadow is often called out for being the ridiculous, try-hard, edgelord black sheep of the Sonic family. Why would a Sonic game, something that has traditionally looked like this, need guns, vehicles, and a story centred around alien invasions. Who would sign off on such a drastic tonal shift? If we look at both the wider industry and Sonic's historic audience, it's actually not that absurd. Shadow released in 2005, when both the Jack and Ratchet and Clank trilogies were riding high. The developers of phenomenal, child-friendly platforming trilogies Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon were now enjoying a lot of success with more mature settings and a focus on gunplay. The kids who grew up with Sonic in 1991 were now teenagers. As I said in my Sonic Heroes video, I initially skipped that game because I was busy playing Burnout, Metal Gear Solid, and Grand Theft Auto. I pretentiously thought I had grown out of Sonic, and I wasn't alone in that thinking. A grittier Sonic seemed, to my Sum 41 Linkin Park and corn-loving adolescence, like the franchise was trying to grow up with me. New fans, kids, could have heroes, while Shadow seemed like the perfect candidate to lead a more adult line of entries. Sega had identified a target demographic with laser precision, and I perfectly fit that market persona. I thought it was a great idea. Then I bought the game, played it for a while, got bored, and dropped off without ever unlocking the last story or true final boss. It just failed to grab me at the time. In the almost two decades since, I fell into the trap of largely parroting the internet's common consensus of this being a terrible game without giving it a second chance or forming my own opinion, something I think that far too many of us are far too guilty of far too often. I bought into the online narrative around Shadow so much that I actively put off playing it again for this very video because I was dreading revisiting such an awful chore of a game. So imagine my surprise when I found myself having a lot of fun with it. The game made a bad first impression. Shadow felt very slippery and loose to control. I kept getting hit by orbital lasers or the abundance of projectile spewing enemies, and there was next to no platforming in this 3D platformer. I looked at the hero and dark missions, kill every enemy on either side of the conflict, and groaned, resigning myself to just doing the neutral get to the end of the stage missions for my first run. During that playthrough, I largely ignored the guns and vehicles. Shadow can keep up with the fastest thing alive on foot, and a homing attack should be all he ever needs, right? I tried to play the game as if it was any other 3D Sonic game, resisting its unique mechanics, and wondering whether I would have the stamina to complete 10 playthroughs to get all of the endings and unlock the true finale. The lowest point came in Iron Jungle. There are a couple of points where I had to kill enemies to make a central platform rise. In one of those rooms, despite multiple restarts, the platform consistently never rose. What I didn't realise is that this room worked differently than the identical room from earlier, and I instead had to climb two horizontal poles at the back. I ended up skipping that room entirely with a well-timed homing attack. 
While I got used to Shadow's wide and sensitive steering, which suited the much broader pathways of the levels, the start of my hero playthrough reinforced my assumption that I was in for a bad time. My first mission was to kill 45 aliens. By the time I reached the end of the level, I had 42 out of 45, and it took me a moment to realise that there was a dash pad behind the end of level goal, which took me to a new area containing the final three enemies. Level 1, Mission 1, and they're already pulling this kind of trick? Great. That said, the mission did warm me up to the idea of using guns, and I actually liked the fairly generous auto-aim they provided. Mission 2 outright misled me. You're still in the city, Joy, and you have to destroy Black Doom's fleeing plane. Sonic says, and I quote, hmm, The tank's barrier seems to be deflecting bullets. This caused me to stop shooting at the target and rely solely on homing attacks to bring it down instead. Spoiler alert, the homing attack is one of your weakest offensive options and it's nigh on impossible to destroy the craft with physical attacks alone. I got frustrated, did some googling, and discovered you can, and absolutely should, use guns to shoot the tank down. I was livid. If I had stopped and written the review there and then, it would have been as scathing as every other video you've seen about Shadow the Hedgehog. Thankfully, I persevered. Being forced to use guns in this mission also brought me to an important realisation. This isn't a 3D platformer. This is a 3D run and gun. Stop playing this like a Sonic game, and instead start playing this like a 3D Gunstar Heroes, Contra, or Metal Slug. That was the moment my experience changed for the better. A switch flipped in my brain, I engaged the game on its own terms, and I started having a lot more fun with it. Granted, in the past, I have criticised games for being inflexible and not accommodating a variety of playstyles, and that's certainly a point for discussion. My hero playthrough definitely lacked mission variety. Out of six stages, three were commit genocide, with one of them taking place in the maze-like arc, one was kill this one specific super enemy, the fleeing tank, one was to collect 400 rings, which felt mechanically very similar to hunting down enemies, and one was to simply get to the end of the level. I even had to fight the same boss, Black Ball, twice. The worst level of that run was easily lost impact. The arc is a series of rooms and corridors that look identical, with unclear and unhelpful glowing green maps on some walls. At one point, I assumed the game had glitched as there wasn't a clear route forward, and I restarted the whole stage. It turned out, I had just entered a side room, mistakenly thinking it was the main path forwards. That said, the level variety was impressive. After Westopolis, Shadow visits a carnival, some ruins, and the very stylized and visually impressive alien Black Comet. The comet itself featuring a neat light puzzle mechanic where you have to use a vacuum gun to pull out new platforms for yourself to jump along. Sadly, my dark playthrough then had a rocky start. I was scouring the map for what felt like forever, hunting down a 35th soldier I needed to take out. Fortunately, the level and mission variety was much stronger from level 2 onwards, as I visited a digital cyberspace, a haunted castle, the Ark's exterior just as I remember it from Sonic Adventure 2, and the run culminated in storming a gun fortress, all guns blazing. I finally started to appreciate Shadow's multiple branching paths once I started going for the remaining seven endings. I could pick and choose which missions I did, and didn't want to do, I could route myself to pretty much any of the conclusions without having to do a kill-everything task. 
there was a surprising amount of freedom and flexibility. I could truly play in ways that suited my preferences and still get the outcome I wanted. Bar some jank and a handful of automated sequences screwing up and sending me to my unfair death, these remaining seven adventures were the highlights of my time with the game. Admittedly, I did get cheeky and see if I could use select mode to return to past final levels, completing the opposite mission to unlock the other boss fight and ending without doing a full playthrough, but that doesn't work. It has to be 10 full playthroughs in story mode. Remember earlier when I said, Granted, in the past, I have criticised games for being inflexible and not accommodating a variety of playstyles, and that's certainly a point for discussion. This is the time for that discussion, and this is why I would be reluctant to dock points from Shadow for its mission structure and branching paths. Unlocking all of the endings and the coveted last story was something that I assumed would be tedious, repetitive, and draining. I thought it was going to take forever. In truth, each run lasted between one to two hours. Spaced out over a week, it was actually a much more leisurely experience than I had anticipated. The sole exception came during Cosmic Fall. I was aiming for the hero mission, find the computer room, but messed up a triangle jump and unintentionally landed on the dark mission objective, instantly ending the stage, sending me to the boss and ending that I didn't want, adding an entire extra playthrough to correct my mistake. For those curious, these are the routes that I took for all ten endings. You can see from how these are numbered that there are 326 possible paths through the game. If there's a mission you absolutely hate and fundamentally do not want to do, you genuinely do not have to. You can 100% take a different path around it. The mission designs can absolutely be improved. When we were given similar objectives in Sonic Heroes as Team Chaotix, we were asked to find five MacGuffins, but there would be seven or eight of them in the level. There was room for error. In Shadow, when you're told to activate five bombs, or kill 35 enemies, or collect five secret discs, there aren't any extras. You have to find them all. You can warp around the level by teleporting between save points, but you have no way of knowing where the thing you missed is. The game could have easily addressed this by showing how many objectives you had found in each area, so that you could at least say, alright, the final one must be between these two checkpoints, if I get to here, I've gone too far. If this game were to ever get a re-release, remaster, or remake, I would 100% expect to see these two changes implemented. I think these fixes would actually make for a great quality of life mod for the game as is, assuming the community hasn't already made and released something along those lines. While I'm talking missions, I have to praise Lava Shelter. As it stands, each level's missions could be compared with the high, medium, and low routes in traditional 2D Sonic levels, but only Lava Shelter fully realises and takes advantage of that concept. You have two options, reach the end with Omega or activate all of the base's defences with Robotnik. Activating the defences releases lava into several areas of the level, blocking off easier routes, and forcing you to navigate harder platforming challenges instead. It is nothing short of transformative. Completing the two objectives feels like playing two different stages. It thoroughly impressed me, and I would have loved to have seen more of this throughout the game. There is something that I'm unsure how to fix or address. Shadow has his chaos powers. Doing evil actions builds a red bar which, when full, allows you to do a chaos blast. This is a destructive area of effect move that's actually pretty useful. Good actions fill a blue bar that allows you to use chaos control and zip through the level. 
This is good for speedrunning and neutral get to the end missions, but when you have objectives to find or destroy objects, it can zip you straight past those objects, resulting in mandatory backtracking. As a result, I rarely used my hero powers, letting the bar drain and go to waste. One of the biggest criticisms against Shadow the Hedgehog is that its choose-your-own-adventure story is incoherent, leading to shifting character alignments and motivations. It's also claimed that everything except the last story is non-canon, inconsequential, and entirely skippable. That's only partially true, however. The story isn't perfect, far from it, but is it the filler arc people make it out to be? There are issues with the story. For those unfamiliar, Shadow seemingly died at the end of Sonic Adventure 2, only to reappear in the next game, Sonic Heroes. It was unclear whether this was the real Shadow suffering from amnesia, a biological clone, or an android, sorry, Jinzo Ningen before the Dragon Ball fanbase come after me. This game is supposed to answer that hanging thread, as Shadow explores who he is, why he was created, and what his purpose in life is. Which would be fine if we, the audience, didn't already know the answers to all of that from Shadow's character arc in Sonic Adventure 2. Shadow the Hedgehog, the game, not the character, confuses adding depth and development to Shadow's character and backstory with adding unnecessary and inconsequential details to Shadow's character and backstory. Through my ten playthroughs, I learned that the Gun Commander – does he have a name, by the way? I didn't catch one – holds a grudge against Shadow as the Commander was childhood friends with Maria, and believes Shadow is responsible for the deaths of everyone aboard the Ark 50 years ago. How does the Gun Commander react to finding out that Gun, the organisation he now leads, are actually responsible for the very deaths which sparked his desire for revenge, motivating his entire career and outlook on life? Does he feel remorse, anger, confusion? We seemingly never find out. He confronts and wrongly accuses Shadow, he sees Gerald Robotnik's tape revealing the government to have been at fault, but as far as I could tell, he never gets any resolution or closure besides this one line from the President. I also learned that Black Doom helped Dr. Gerald Robotnik create Shadow, on the condition that Shadow brings Black Doom the Seven Chaos Emeralds in 50 years' time, aka here and now the consequences of which are limited to the events of this game. Yes, it's fair to say that this game is a lazy and less impactful rehash of Shadow's character arc from two games ago. It's arguably justified to compare Shadow to Vegeta, a character that's purposefully and arbitrarily regressed, solely to repeat the same, quote, growth that they already underwent. It's also true that we only get an answer to the game's core question, is this the real Shadow, in a missable piece of radio chatter that takes place 8 minutes and 45 seconds into a final boss fight that's designed to typically last about 3 minutes. Spoiler alert, yes, this is the real Shadow, according to Dr. Robotnik, because light Gaia forbid that we follow through on the potentially interesting identity crisis of learning you're a copy of someone else. What isn't true is that the stories are incoherent nonsense. The neutral path actually gave me a cool tale of Shadow teaming up with Omega again to face off against Robotnik. The semi-hero path saw Shadow become an honorary member of Team Chaotix, working with Charmy, Espio, and Vector. I'm sure you can get some wacky nonsense if you're jumping around all over the place with your allegiances, but generally speaking, most of my runs were solid. 
The game also includes some nice throwbacks to previous titles, for example, Tails using a Chaos Emerald to power the tornado. It's just a nice little touch for fans. I only ran into two inconsistencies. The first was on my Dark playthrough. In the castle stage, I ignored Amy and did Robotnik's mission, lighting five lanterns for him. This somehow led to a boss battle against Robotnik, where Amy was helping me in the fight. The other came late into my semi-dark run. You're given a mission to shoot down the president's plane as he flees, killing him. Whether you blow him up or not, you get the same cutscene of the somehow completely intact plane landing at gun headquarters, with a very much alive president stepping out of it. Now, you could explain it away by saying you were chasing a decoy or whatever, but to my knowledge, no such explanation exists in-game. Overall, my concern was that by having not fully completed this game, I was missing vital information about Shadow the Hedgehog, one of the series' better characters. Turns out, that's not the case. From a plot perspective, there is very little of consequence here, and you can skip this game with relative safety in that regard. In the game's favour, though, is its sheer vibe. There have always been rock and guitars in Sonic, but Shadow takes so many more cues from grunge and metal. Without other playable characters, the soundtrack can focus on a single genre. I'm biased, my music tastes were, and still are, closely aligned to Shadow's offerings. These are tracks I could happily listen to outside of the game, both back in the day and here and now. Even so, this is a very strong showing. For a supposedly grimdark game, there's a surprising amount of colour, with implied lighting seemingly baked directly into the texture mapping. It looks great for its time, still holding up fairly well today. The pre-rendered cutscenes are on an entirely different level. We all praise Sonic Unleashed for its opening cinematic, while forgetting just how high this game set that bar. More evidence of the developers having a concentrated design plan that was executed with precision. Sure, there are moments when this looks more like a Metal Gear Solid game than a Sonic the Hedgehog game, but for the most part, I think the visual design really does come together nicely. This game has its annoyances. It sounds ridiculous on paper, the endings are all very similar to each other, and it unapologetically recycles boss fights. Some levels are frustrating and confusing to navigate, I already talked at length about the tweaks needed to the mission designs, but I can't hand on heart call this a bad game. Maybe it's because I went into Sonic Adventure 2 with fond memories and high expectations, only to be met by frustration and disappointment, while I went into Shadow the Hedgehog with low expectations and came away pleasantly surprised, but I genuinely find myself coming away with a bigger smile on my face after replaying Shadow than I did when I revisited Adventure 2. In direct comparison to Adventure 2, Shadow gave me a much more uniform gameplay experience. I wasn't being forced to change character and gameplay styles every five minutes, helping me achieve and maintain an all-important flow state. I wasn't being surprised by and taking cheap shots from poorly placed enemies and hazards. They concentrated on doing one set of mechanics well instead of three sets done competently. Ironically, for a game about Shadow exploring who he is, Shadow the Hedgehog the game has one of the strongest senses of gameplay and thematic tone and identity in the entire franchise. It sets out its offer, cards on the table, from the get-go. I can respect that what it offers, a 3D run-and-gun in the Sonic universe, might not be to your liking or tastes, 
but you also have to respect its commitment and consistency towards those ideas. Hey, this guy just implied that he liked Shadow more than Sonic Adventure 2. Let's kill him! Yeah, I did. And you know what? I'd say it again, too. I am not trolling you. I am being entirely sincere, and I am just as surprised as you are. Seriously, folks, ignore the internet echo chamber on this one. Pick up Shadow for yourself, either the GameCube or Xbox version, avoid the underperforming PS2 port, and make up your own mind. You can't buy the game first-hand anymore. At the time of writing, it's not available on any modern platforms, and there was never a PC release. There's no way to give Sega your money for this game, so I wouldn't blame you for emulating it with a higher native resolution, widescreen hack, and an Xbox One or Series controller. Of course, if that situation changes in the future, then you should absolutely support the official release. That's another mainline Sonic game covered. I guess the next one in my queue is… ah, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, another game with a certain reputation online. Will I end up seeing something everyone else missed and enjoyed that one too, or am I in for just as bad a time as everyone tells me? Keep your eyes on my channel to find out. Goodbye forever, Shadow the Hedgehog.